You know, I really don't think that Raspberry Pis have lived up to the promises that they set out to provide for us. What started as a $25 mini computer with some GPIO ended up becoming hundreds of dollars, hard to find, an ecosystem that does provide a lot of value for people tinkering with things, but in general, it has been a big waste of time for me. I've had more Raspberry Pis than I can even remember at this point. I'm sure a lot of you have the same experience where you buy it for a project and then at some point it just becomes not powerful enough, not convenient enough because there's no case or you need add-ons or extensions, whatever it is, and then it just sits in a drawer. Last year for SoCal Linux Expo, I asked the community if anyone had Raspberry Pis sitting in drawers and I literally got hundreds of Raspberry Pis and I gave them away which was freaking awesome. I don't want to say that that's not a cool thing, just to be able to give them to kids. Like we gave them to people looking for jobs, people that were interested. This is the Latte Panda Iota, and here it is next to a Raspberry Pi. They are very close in size. The difference here with the Iota is it's an x86 board. It has a full UEFI BIOS and I like it a lot. Now this is sponsored hardware, but I asked them if they would send me one so I could do a review on it because I was excited about just the form factor and the benefits that it would provide for me in projects that I'm doing. And I've made a couple videos already in the past that were fine just to kind of get started and, and see what the accessories could do, but I really needed to build a project. So my most recent project was building this backpack that I brought to a conference and the IOTA was a main piece of that project. And I really enjoyed it, not only because it just worked out of the box, but also because I was able to abuse it quite a bit and it kept ticking. And a lot of people already pointed out that I should just get mini PCs for some of this. And other people said I should get something like the Radza for, you know, a smaller board. But in general, both of them have limitations or trade-offs that I didn't need for most of my projects. And some people might be in the same situation that I am where a mini PC is great. I really love that the market has dropped for them. They're really capable and they come with cases and replaceable RAM. All of that stuff is awesome, but also they're a little bit larger. And maybe sometimes I want something in a custom case, or I do want something with power over ethernet. Those are trade-offs that I don't always want a mini PC for. I also say on the other side of things, sometimes I want GPIO pins. I actually want to make LEDs blink or control a motor or something. And in that case, something like the IOTA may not be the best case. It does have GPIO pins, but the ecosystem of add-ons and hats that Raspberry Pis have is not gonna be the same thing. So I'm gonna give you a real quick overview of what I think about the IOTA after building a couple things with it, having it for about a month, and trying some of the accessories and seeing how they work. This isn't a full-blown performance review. I'm not going through specs or details. I'm just showing you the things I liked and didn't like about the board and why I'm probably getting more IOTAs than Raspberry Pis in the future. So like I said, Latte Panda sent me this board along with their accessories kit. It came with a bunch of accessories accessories, including the power over ethernet hats, the UPS hats, M.2 expansion board, and even a 4G radio. Now I didn't use all of these things in all of my projects, but I did use the UPS hat and the M.2 slots for the recent project I was working on. And like I said, both of them worked really well. The UPS hat I liked more than I expected, mainly just because it added just enough extra power when my battery pack died to keep the control plane running and some things available to me so I could debug things if for some reason the battery wasn't running. I could totally see this UPS being used for situations like controlling cameras or network routers or things that you want available even when maybe your power goes out. The kind of foundational pieces of a home lab is a great place to kind of put a UPS. And obviously you can get a big external UPS, which works just as well for computers. But in this case, having it small and kind of built in was a nice little backup to the backup. The M.2 slot works well. It has an SSD. I thought the M.2 slots on the Latte Panda was for hard drives and I was incorrect when I originally got it. And that's actually only for wireless cards. It was something that I wish that was just a standard storage driver, but instead it's only for adding wireless. I don't really care for wireless for most of my projects, pretty much everything is hardwired, but having the expansion was kind of critical just to be able to add more fast storage to the device. One thing I'm not thrilled with on the Latte Panda is the fact that the hats don't stack and the extensions are kind of hard to work together. If you want to use something like the Power Over Ethernet hat along with the UPS, that's not really going to work. You're going to have to pick and choose which accessories you're going to use. In this case, I was able to make the M.2 extension work with the UPS hat, but only because the M.2 extension only takes up half of the screws and I could put it sideways on the board. 
The M.2 extension also doesn't quite line up. The PCI ribbon cable is just slightly crooked, which drove me crazy. And I was worried that it was gonna disconnect while I was using it. Just a little bit of vibration or movement could probably have that tweak just enough so that it doesn't connect quite right to either the expansion board or the IOTA itself. The power over ethernet hat worked as advertised. I was worried about the power over ethernet expansion board because it does say it requires 51 watts. But thankfully, even on my non PoE++ switches, it was able to power the, the IOTA. It obviously was gonna run underclocked because it can't get enough power from it, but I tried it on both my switches and my injector, and in both cases, the board would power on. I do think they're doing something, but the power over ethernet hat is too tall for most of my use cases. In a lot of cases, I wanna put this in a smaller case or some form factor, and it made the IOTA just too tall to fit in those scenarios. When the IOTA is sitting idle, it sips power like you might expect. It's not quite Raspberry Pi low at under five watts, but it's definitely under 10 watts at idle, which was great for me because I don't generally care about like extremely low power usage. I have solar panels, I have batteries, my home power usage isn't going crazy that a few watts is going to kill me. And even on the UPS hat, I was able to get about 20 to 30 minutes of just idle running, which was fantastic. It just sat there and was still running available. And I might even be able to get back to a power cord to plug it in and start charging it again. Overall, like I said in the beginning of this video, the IOTA has just worked for everything I've thrown at it. it. I can boot any OS, I don't need to worry about custom kernels or different device trees being available. Anything like an SBC that doesn't have a UEFI to boot has to initialize hardware and just becomes kind of a pain sometimes to run any operating system that I want. I've already been recommending the IOTA to a lot of people. Anyone that came up to me and asked me about SBCs or small board computers, this was kind of my go-to recommendation. It is a little bit pricey, but you're looking at maybe $100 to $150 versus $200 to $300 for a mini PC. And here's a few things that I would love to see changed on the IOTA that I think would make it actually like the perfect device for what I'm doing. I know a lot of people want the GPIO, and in most cases for what I'm doing with them, I don't want GPIO. I don't care about it. I don't care. It's cool that they have a Raspberry Pi built into the board that you can kind of flash and, and use the GPIO on it. I don't care. It's not something that I'm doing. I will get other Raspberry Pis or SBCs to do that type of work. Especially things like a Pi Zero are so cheap that I can put that somewhere and run MicroPython right on it. So if dropping the GPIO would drop the price of this by maybe five or $10, I would gladly take it. Maybe then the battery could also be put on the board instead of this jumper wire, because this is pretty ridiculous. <laughs> I understand the board is really tight and I don't care that they made it a little bit wider than a Raspberry Pi. I would love to see the battery like built onto the board somewhere and even maybe like a vertical placement here because it may not be taller than the USB stack or the ethernet ports by putting a battery vertical somewhere on the board. I also wish that that M2 slot on the board would also would support an NVMe hard drive because that would save me from buying an extension or hanging something off the side if I want to have faster disk access. And NVMEs are so cheap now, it makes sense just to have a small MMC built into the board that stores the operating system and everything else gets mounted to the NVMe. But it kind of stinks that I have to have this extra board with cables, with a ribbon cable and other things that are just likely to fail at some point. It even has a micro SD slot on it, which probably would work for some of this stuff. But again, wearing out micro SD cards every year just kind of gets tiring. And so many people that have been doing Raspberry Pis since they came out is just like, I don't want more micro SD cards. The last thing I would love to see is actual USB-C for the data on the board itself. It's all USB-A right now for data. It kind of sucks. Uh, I have to have adapters for pretty much all my stuff now. It worked great with a Jet KVM, but I have to have an adapter for it. It works great for various things, but I have to have adapters for it. Having at least one USB-C port straight on the board would help me in some of these scenarios. I really appreciate the full-size HDMI though, because even when I don't always use HDMI, it's nice to not need an adapter. Again, something else I had to buy with Raspberry Pis that now I'm like, I have a bunch of these micro HDMI adapters that I need to find which one is the right one. The last improvement is something that Latte Panda can't fix and that's just the community behind it, right? The Raspberry Pi community has been going strong for a long time. If you want to 3D print a case, you can find a billion of them that exist on the internet. When I was looking to 3D print a case for mine, I found one. And then, so I tried it and it worked great. It was a good case, but it doesn't work with any of the extensions, obviously. It's only for a bare iota. 
there are a lot of other expansion options on the board itself, like things for touchscreens and displays that I don't even think accessories exist for. I'm sure something out there will plug into it, but I didn't find anything from Latte Panda directly that would use these expansion ports. So making that ecosystem easier to kind of understand and if you want to use it in different use cases would be great and kind of catch them up to what the Raspberry Pi has been doing for a long time. So overall, I think it's a great option. It's a good board. It fits in this between space Space between a Raspberry Pi and a mini PC that I think the price point is good and the use cases are even better where I didn't have to fiddle with a bunch of stuff and flash SD cards to just get something to Pixie boot. Pixie supported out of the box, which is awesome in most of the things that I'm trying to do. So if you have a similar use case and you just want small, low power, quiet PCs running various things, definitely look at the IOTA. All the other computers and boards I was kind of looking at might have similar trade-offs. They might be smaller. Some of them have different cases. I know Latte Panda also sells really high-end mini PCs or something that fits in this form factor. Things like the Sigma and the Delta are really performant computers and they also happen to have a bunch of IO on them. But the downside is usually the price. Those range anywhere from $400 to $600. That's more than a mini PC market today and less than maybe like a desktop that will give you great performance at higher power usage. They're really fun and small, but may not be the exact thing you're looking for unless you need the high performance. So I wanted to thank Latte Panda for sending me the IOTA to try out. It was a lot of fun. This one's not gonna be sitting in a drawer. I'm absolutely gonna be using this for projects. And like I said, I already built one thing out of it and I'm probably gonna buy more in the future just because I like this form factor. I like where it sits in the price points and I like the options that are available for me to do the projects that I'm trying to do. I don't think this is a Raspberry Pi killer. It's definitely not solving the ecosystem problem that Raspberry Pi solves for you, but it does give you another option that's above performance of a Raspberry Pi but below the performance of a full desktop. So thanks everyone for watching. I just wanted to give my overview of what I thought, how it's going, and what I'm looking forward to in it in the future. Leave a comment with any projects that you would do with something like an IOTA that is that in-between ground of Raspberry Pi and full PC. Thanks everyone. We'll talk to you again later.